Hey guys, it's Danny. Now today it is not the 1st of December, but we're very close to that, so it will have to do. It is time to recap the orchids that were in bloom this month in my collection. So we're gonna take a look at them, I'll tell you a little bit about them, I will try to be as brief as possible, but these videos tend to be pretty long. Anyway though, hopefully this video will give you some suggestions for your wish list. Before we start, let me remind you that you can actually vote for your favorite orchid this month. If you check the description, you will find a link to a straw poll in which all of these orchids will be listed. Feel free to vote for your favorite one this month. At the end of the year, we will declare Orchid of the Year in my collection. It's a fun little thing we've been doing for the past few years, so if you think it's kind of fun, just check the description. And with that said, let's start, because we do have quite a few. First off, an orchid which is not in bloom anymore, but fear not, I did manage to film it in its full glory. This is the Bulbophyllum Elizabeth and Buckleberry. For those of you who are older on my channel, you might already know this one. It's a very old orchid in my collection and it blooms every single year. It is very easy to grow, wonderful to look at, and if you are interested in some care tips, check the description and the info card on the screen. I made a video about this specific hybrid, so you'll find out more there, but I do consider this orchid to be very, very beginner friendly. It really isn't very similar to Phalaenopsis, but it doesn't really require very, very different care. So in my opinion, this makes it very suited even for beginners. The problem is where you find it. You will not find this one in flower shops or garden centers, most probably, but in dedicated nurseries. Other than that though, it really is a joy to grow. It does not smell bad and it looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, things are getting kind of noisy outside, so I close the windows. Hopefully there isn't much echo. Next up, how we are a lava burst. Look how red this orchid is. Can you believe I almost lost this orchid? This was one of those very, very stubborn orchids which simply did not want to adapt to semi-hydro, like uh, all of that fun stuff, no, no. We want organic media, sphagnum moss, bark, you name it just not Lika. But anyway, ever since I made the switch back to organic media, oh, she's doing so great and she's blooming on every single flower spike with these wonderful flowers. A little bonus that I discovered this year, it is slightly, slightly fragrant. Don't imagine it's gonna fill up the room with perfume, but if you stick your nose into the flower in daytime, especially if it's very bright, you will detect a very, very faint sweet fragrance that reminds of the twinkles, or maybe the Soroanum. It's not as pleasant as the Sherry Baby, but it's something. So if you have this orchid and you never notice the fragrance, do visit the orchid in the middle of the day and get very close to the flowers, maybe you will detect it. The fragrance is not the main attraction, so if you wanna purchase this orchid, don't do so for the fragrance. It's really not very, very noticeable. If you do enjoy red colors, then this is the orchid for you. It is very tiny, space-saving, takes the same care as any Oncidium, and the blooms are just gorgeous. Very tiny, but very fiery red. Next up, this is an Oncidium I purchased as a no ID from Orchids Deluxe, I think, about a year ago. And judging by the flowers, I do believe this is the Oncidium CT or Kuto Red Cherry. If you search for pictures on the internet, you will see the flowers might vary a little bit. You will see some that are more purple, a few that are pink like the one I'm showing you, but I do strongly believe it is the Red Cherry. You'll see why in a moment, but I'm actually super happy this turned out to be this variety because it is the very first Oncidium I ever wanted to buy from Schroeder. And for whatever reason, I just skipped it from my order and ever since then, I never bought it. So I'm very happy that somehow it made its way back to me after seven years. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness, I'm so old. Anyway, this is a tiny little Oncidium, very similar to the twinkles in size, but it does not have a tendency to get spots on the leaves. It is also not that fragrant. It does have a little bit of a fragrance, reminds again of the Oncidium twinkles. Probably they have the Sotoanum as a parent in common, but here's the catch. When I ordered this orchid, I actually received two of them, which were not in bloom. They looked identical, so I thought, yeah, it's the same thing, I'm gonna pot them together. Well, surprise, surprise, this is a pink variety. And here we have a very, very nice full purple variety. 
I do much prefer this one, but that one is really pretty as well. So right now, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this community pot together or I'm gonna separate them, donate one. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I love them both. It's kind of interesting to have in one pot two different looking like flowers. But at the same time, I don't know if I'm okay with that. So I don't know at this moment. Next month, we're gonna see this spike in full bloom. But yeah, the flowers are different because there are two different orchids here. They are the same variety or the same hybrid, just a slight different variety or cultivar. Next up, we have a Cattleya type orchid. This is Potinara burana beauty. We saw this one in bloom a few months ago, but this is a different direction of growth which bloomed. As you can see, one of the buds did not develop. You know why? Because mealy bugs, and it's not the only Cattleya that lost a bud. I have two more that lost buds to mealy bugs. Next year, I'm gonna take measures. I was not expecting to have such a mealy bug infestation this summer, but hey, it happens. When growing orchids outside, there are things we need to be mindful of. Now I know, but anyway, the Burana Beauty is one of those hybrids that I absolutely recommend to everybody. I think I can recommend all of the orchids that I'm gonna show you, maybe, but this one in particular. If you want a beautiful Cattleya, which is very easy to grow, has really lovely blooms that smell incredible, this is the one for you. It grows more than one suitable per year, grows pretty fast in comparison to other Cattleyas. It is not hugely tall. It can become a little bushy, but the fragrance of the flowers makes up for everything, all of the inconveniences. This one smells identical to roses, but it's a sort of fresh rose scent. So if you love roses, I think you'll absolutely adore the fragrance of this orchid. As I was saying, she is a very, very hardy, very vigorous hybrid. She grows super fast is not very tall, flowers are not very huge. They make a nice proportion with the entirety of the plant. I am just so sad about this bud here and so sad about the situation of the millies, but next year I'm gonna be more careful. Next up, we have a No ID on Cidium intergeneric. I've seen this one around, but I did not manage to find an ID just yet. It is not the Tahitian dancer. So as you can see, a few flowers are already fading, but I did film this one in full glory and it is absolutely amazing. The flowers look like they're velvety and that beautiful white edging just makes everything so much more dimensional. It gives a lot of depth to the flower. There is also fragrance, very mild, very candy sweet-like. I like it. It's not filling up the room. I don't really detect it next to the Bellina, for example, but it's there. So I do believe that even those of you who are a little sensitive to fragrance can actually keep the orchid without any type of problem. And honestly, it's not all that finicky. I do suspect it has some Miltonia in its parentage, not necessarily Miltoniopsis. So it does require a little bit more water. It does like things a little bit more wet, but it really isn't a finicky, finicky orchid. So I'm looking forward to an ID. If you guys have a suggestion, do leave it in a comment down below. Until then, you will find this one described as the Oncidium No ID pink with white edges. I think that's how I'm gonna write it in the list. And since I mentioned the Bellina, here she is, finally in bloom. This year, since I grew her outside, she focused on vegetative growth, she produced two leaves and only one flower, and now she's gonna stop blooming because it's winter. But I'm enjoying this flower so, so much. I adore the fragrance of the Bellina. It is kind of sweet, but very fruity and mouth-watering at the same time. It is one of my favorite fragrances in the entire orchid kingdom, really, because it really is unique. The flower I love as well, and particularly this plant, I just grew to love a lot. You might notice that the leaves of my Bellina are not looking very, very pretty, and this is because she is infected with the Oncidium fleck virus. Links below, I explain more in a different video how this happened, but yeah, at some point I was contemplating to find a replacement for it, but you know what? This year I've already lost somebody dear to me. As much as I held on, he didn't hold on to me. But this orchid is holding on. Whenever I say, okay, she doesn't look so good, I think the virus will just overcome it. No, she pulls through, she blooms beautiful, she produces leaves, and you know what? Even though they don't look the best, even though I can still see discoloration and spots, every year I feel like she's just a little bit better. So you know what? 
As long as she holds on, I'm gonna hold on to it. I'm not even thinking about replacements. Maybe I'm gonna get the blue variety of Belina. That would be fun, but not this one, not something that looks like her. I am holding on to her. But I just find it funny that after all of this, after everything, the move and the fasarium and the all of this stress, she is hanging on and she looks freaking beautiful. Next up here we have another summer blooming fowl. This is Phalaenopsis penanga girl crossed with Violacea fungus net. Get away. Go, go play with the carnivorous plants, please. And is slowly but surely growing on me so much. Look how beautiful the little flower is. Very, very dark purple. And the orchid herself is starting to do so, so much better. This leaf looks wonderful. So yeah, these orchids did fabulous outside. They grew so well. Fungus gnat, please. So these orchids did very, very well outside. They just didn't bloom so well. This particular hybrid smells a little bit like the Violacea to me. Obviously, she is a Violacea primary hybrid, but color-wise, it really looks very different. The color is a lot more intense, a lot darker. You'll see in a bit my Violacea as well. And the shape of the flower is a little bit different. Now, considering that there are quite a few varieties of the Violacea as well, I have yet to see such a dark color on one. So this could be a very nice alternative if you really don't like that much the color of the Violacea but you want to have the fragrance. The cross with the Penon Girl looks very very similar and smells very very similar as well. But of course if you really really adore species the Violacea is one of those that you really need to have. The variety I have is the Indigo Blue crossed with Indigo Red. I'm not even sure if those varieties are legit because I didn't actually hear of them until now, until I purchased this one. But the coloration of the flower is quite unique. It is a solid purple magenta color, very, very bright. Violacea's could be a little washed. If you're gonna Google flowers, you'll see what I mean. So you can have a purpley, pinky washed color, which I personally don't enjoy all that much. That's why I postponed buying a Violacea for so many years until I saw this one. And this looks absolutely awesome. The fragrance is really good as well. To me, it smells like cinnamon or actually more like cinnamon oil. It is pretty intense. I think I prefer the Bellina just a little bit, but the Violacea smells sweet and beautiful as well. Next up, here we have a Dendrobium that I didn't treat very well when I purchased it and I repotted. it. It's a funny video. Check it down below. I'll share it with you. I'll always share this video because I myself get amused when I rewatch it. Anyway, I managed to separate one of the pseudobulbs from the entire orc. Actually, multiple pseudobulbs. It was a mess. But look at him now. He's in full glory and we actually have an ID. This is the Dendrobium Cherry Song. Thanks to one of my viewers, we managed to identify him. And if I were to recommend one variety of dendrobiums to beginners, it would be this one because it's so easy to grow. It blooms multiple times a year. It grows multiple canes per year. It is not fragrant, but look how pretty he is. It produces a lot of flowers, a lot of flower spikes. They're kind of tiny. Yes, they're not very flashy and the entire orchid is not very big, but it is space saving and the more mature this orchid grows, the better the display. You can have a mass of flowers at some point. Mine needs a little bit of help and we're gonna make a separate video when he's done with his blooms. This right here is a keiki. Can you see that this is not actually potted? It is a keiki that grew another growth and so on and so forth. This section right here isn't hanging on all too well, so I will intervene. I will remove the keiki, pot it separately together with the other canes because now, look at this, it's, it's a little wonky what's happening here, but as I was saying, I managed to separate some canes when I repotted it. It's completely my fault, but we're gonna fix it in a different video. Next up, Oncidopsis Cheyenne, yet again. This is not my older Cheyenne, it's a new one. We saved this Oncidium this spring. I purchased it without flowers and behold, it is a Cheyenne. As you know, I have another one which I will be putting in the giveaway next week, I think. So stay tuned for that, but here we have him. I'm not gonna talk too much about him. We just saw this one in bloom about two months ago. It is a red, beautiful Oncidium. Not fragrant, but the flowers are so fiery and so intense that I do believe your eyes kind of hurt because the decorative pot is blue and it makes such a contrast with the red. In reality, it's the same story. I think I will have to change the decorative pot of this orchid because my eyes hurt just looking at the orchid. 
but yeah it is so intense absolutely worth having it's not a difficult orchid but compared to the dendrobium that i showed you and even the bulbophyllum mm, those ones are just a little easier to grow and now let's see some dendrobium phalaenopsis types we saw two of them last month we have a few this month and there will be a few more next month they didn't all bloom at the same time i don't know how but anyway this one is the dendrobium velvet melody commercially i think you will find it under the name of thailand black as well isn't he gorgeous i think this camera can capture a very close to reality color this is an orchid that never photographs well it is so so dark in reality that cameras try to compensate and when you see pictures of it you will see it as a lighter purple or burgundy certainly not as dark as it is in reality so i'm doing my best to adjust the camera settings to give you a close to reality representation it is not very very exact but it's close it is a very very velvety flower that is so dark that it just swallows up light it doesn't reflect anything but it's absolutely magical i think it smells very 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 slight to me it reminds of snowbells I wouldn't call it perfumey or very fragrant. It's just something there. It doesn't smell like nothingness. And we also have another flower spike in the back there on a very old cane with only two flowers. But hey, I'm not gonna say no to flowers, especially these flowers. Next up here is a no ID dendrobium. I will call it the pink splash. This is one that I got a couple of years ago from Ikea during the time that Ikea was bringing something else rather than Phalaenopsis. For the past two years, Ikea stopped bringing anything other than fowls. What to do? But I managed to find this one and never saw this hybrid since. Now, sadly, this year, some of the flowers are a little wonky, a little twisty. I'm not entirely sure why. So we'll see next year what happens. I'm okay with the flowers, but yeah, they look a little silly because it appears that one looks good, one is wonky. Then the other looks good, next one is wonky, it alternates. But it doesn't take all that much from the display and I do really really like the splashy effect. I also love the fact that the petals, or actually no, these are the sepals, they're white. They make such a nice contrast with the pink. I like anything that is white and another color. It's a beautiful contrast to my eyes. And the last Oncidium we're gonna look at today is this No ID Pink Oncidium, that's how I'm gonna call it. I purchased this one again about a couple of years ago and it was pretty bushy, it had a lot of flower spikes, but I divided it. And you know what? It hated it. I don't know why it absolutely disliked being divided, being repotted. It was a little bit set back, now he's doing absolutely great. But we only have one flower spike and this orchid can produce an immense amount of flower spikes. So I hope we're gonna do better next year. But again, if you have ideas about the name of this orchid, do let me know in a comment down below. I'm happy to see that he's doing so well now. Look at this. He bounced back. The pseudobulbs are very, very plump and nice once again, but can you see? This is how tall they should be and this is how they are. Clearly, we still have some setback here. So I don't think I'm gonna attempt to divide it in the future anymore. Maybe it was stressed after I purchased it and coupled with the dividing ended in disaster. I don't know, but he's okay now at least. Next up here we have my Talumnia orchid. We saw it in bloom last month, but ever since then a few more branches started to develop, a few more blooms opened. If you didn't know, Talumnias can actually branch out similarly to Phalaenopsis. But the interesting thing is the flowers on the branches do not look like the original flowers. And it's not a case of the color just fading away with age. No, no. When this orchid opened, the flowers looked pretty similar to this. The new flowers look very different. They're even larger. And actually, the most shocking flower is on this side. Look at that. How pretty is that? You know what? It's not the first Tulumnia that does this. I used to have an orange Tulumnia, which would initially bloom orange, but then the secondary spikes would bloom yellow, like complete yellow, no hint of orange. I don't know why. It's something Tulumnias do. It's not uncommon. I don't suspect all of them do this, but I think the complexity of the genes make them prone to just blooming differently. And it just so happens that the second blooming on the very same flower spike typically looks different than the initial flush. Now, my orange Tulumnia did this twice, so it wasn't a fluke. It did it one year, it did it the second year, and then I lost the Tulumnia, that's a different story. 
But there we have it, Tolumnias can actually bloom different on the same flower spike. And look at the difference. I assure you, it's not the color faded away on the older flowers. You can check the What's in Bloom video that I did last month and you'll see they look nothing like this. To be honest, I do much more prefer them like this, but we'll see what happens. It is the first time this orchid blooms for me, so we'll see what it wants to do in the future. Alrighty guys, we're approaching the end. I cannot believe I kept this so brief. I didn't even run out of space on my SD card. Second to last orchid is the Alisara Diana Dun Gothic, one of my absolute favorite Bellaras or former Bellaras. For those of you who are older on my channel, you must know her for years now. I used to have it in my old growing space in my balcony days, so she's at least four years old in my collection. And she's doing great. Finally, the second direction of growth bloomed as well, but it's still kind of tiny. It bloomed to flowers. They're faded. No point in filming them. This is the main lead, the main direction of growth. Through some sort of miracle, this orchid survived moving to another country, having the fusarium outbreak, not having medium for three weeks. And being that it's a Bellara and wants water all the time, it's pretty shocking, right? Well, it did, it survived, and she's beautiful as ever. I'm not a fan of the fragrance that Bellaras have. It's peppery, not my thing, but it's okay. I know some people who absolutely adore the fragrance, but the flowers are always, always fantastic on Alisara's nowadays. I keep mentioning both of the names because websites will mention either one or the other. So if you're confused about the name, both are okay. Use whichever one you want. But yeah, there she is in bloom again, my all-time favorite Alisara. And the last orchid we're looking at today is a Vanda type orchid. This is Ascacenda Orange Mandarin. I have to say I'm not entirely sure about this name because you will not find it on the internet. It might just be a commercial name. I don't know anything about the parents. This comes from Class and Orchidine and you will find it on their website with this name, but I'm not sure if it's a registered name or just a commercial name. And well, it's an orange Vanda. Some of you might know I always wanted to have an orange Vanda type orchid and I have quite a few of them. This has bloomed for me before. It is an easy Vanda to grow. It has really beautiful flowers, but they are quite tiny. It certainly is not the size of the Pachara Delight or Sanderiana or things of the sorts. Ascocendas are hybrids that typically have tinier flowers due to their Ascocentrum parentage. Nonetheless, it is orange, it is beautiful, not fragrant, but I don't care. It is an orange Vanda and I adore it. Now, I have a little secret secret with this orchid. With some of these Vandas, I had some issues with dehydration. Do you remember the Celestis? It was in full bloom. It kind of was a little dehydrated. When they bloom, they do consume a little bit more water. If you remember, I was watering every single day because the Vandas were in the wooden baskets. Well, things didn't get any easier because I moved them inside. It's kind of cool outside right now for them and I cannot hose them down in the grow space. It's not a proper greenhouse. So I decided I will cheat. Remember last week I showed you a few Vandas which were potted? Also remember I had that video about pot size and how it doesn't matter, it just matters what you put inside? Well, that was a little bit of an epiphany for me. I was always scared to pot Vandas, but then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna pot them. Look at that. This Vanda is potted and it's potted for a while. And you know what? The dehydration issues have gone away. The roots are okay, they absolutely adapted because, well, the basket had medium in it anyway. I didn't have to remove the medium from the roots. It's also very tiny bark, so it's not that hard to remove. It was kind of like getting it out of the basket, putting it in the pot, and I also glued this little tray because it helps me actually with watering. And the result is I do have quite the easy life with the Vanda now. Now, is this ideal? I don't know, I'm testing it out. I decided to move this orchid even though it had a flower spike growing because I knew I couldn't keep up with watering and in the greenhouse, it would have been harder. I would have lost probably some of the buds. So I kind of winged it, waited for things to happen. Nothing actually happened, so it's potted. And you know what? I'm seriously considering potting some more Vandas. Having this setup with the hook and the little tray beneath. But we'll see about that. We'll see how things go. 
This was the last orchid for today, so I will remind you, you can vote for your favorite one down below in the description. I'm curious to see which one you'll pick this time. And with that said, I hope you have a great weekend and you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As, African violet videos from time to time, and if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!